I did a video uh, with the infinite square wheel, and I'm going to show you the code for that. Uh, and, and now I want to modify that and find the energy levels for an infinite square well with a bump in the middle. So this bump, I just broke this into this, uh, the wells of width A and the bumps a third of the way or in the middle. We can put wherever you want. We can change it up. It's going to be fun. Okay, so how does this work? This is called the shooting method of solving a differential equation. So here is the time-independent Schrodinger equation. So it's a, it's a relationship between the second derivative of psi and psi. Uh, and then we have a constant, we have an energy, and we have the potential. Now, just to make things easier, I'm going to say that k is 2m over h bar squared so that I actually get this. Now I'm using this dot notation. I like this dot notation. So psi double dot is equal to the second derivative with respect to x of psi. And then psi dot is the first derivative. So I mean, the, the problem here with this differential equation is that I can easily solve it. But you really need to know two things. If I want to solve it and just plot it out for, the, for all x's that I don't know yet, if I want to work my way through x's, then I need the initial x, the psi at x equals 0, and psi dot is at x equals 0. And I only know psi at x equals 0. Right? So if this is uh, infinite uh, square well on the sides, then psi cannot be here. So I know that psi is equal to zero here and psi is equal to zero here. That means that these are my two boundary conditions. Psi at x, psi at zero equals psi at a equals zero. Those two are, have to be true because it has to be a continuous wave function. So that's a problem because if I start here and then you know find out where the thing's gonna go, I can't make it hit there. And also, I don't know what psi dot is. I don't know what the starting psi dot is. So the way to do this is to model it out and keep changing things until it works. So this is how we do an, a numerical calculation. This is the order method. I'm going to start with the second derivative. I can calculate the second derivative right here at the beginning because I know the value of psi. And I know the value of the potential. And I know the value of e. I pick that. okay, And then I know the value of k. I can use that to then calculate the derivative psi dot at the end of that little space differential, delta x. I'm going to break this into small pieces. Now, I need to know the initial. So I'm just going to pick that. Let's say psi 1 dot equals 1. I'm just going to pick that. So then I can calculate the, the derivative at the end of the space interval. Then I can go down here and use the definition of psi dot to calculate the psi 2 at the wave function at the end of the interval. And then I can update x and then repeat the whole thing. And then I will get to the end and I'll have a wave function. If that wave function is close to 0, then it works. If it's not, then I need to change e by some amount, d equals e equals e plus dE, and then do it again. That's why this shooting method. So I keep on shooting to find this value. Now, what's different in what I'm going to do here is nothing different except that my potential is not zero the whole time. Okay, so let me go over to the code, show you the code. We're going to modify the code, add that bump in there, and then we're going to see what happens. Okay. So here is my computer code. Um, this is not the first, let me go ahead and run this. Uh, so you can see this is not the ground state energy level. Uh, is the second energy level. You can see that I'm increasing my value of e and rerunning the calculation until the wave function right here gets back to uh, zero and I have my well width of one. And then there you go. So I have an energy level of 1.49 electron volts. And so I'm using this, uh, you know, more realistic uh, values. I think I did, did I not? Oh yeah. So I'm using these values of the length in nanometers. I'm using HC. I'm using the mass of the electron in electron volts. So I'm, it's actually mc squared. So there's another c in there and stuff like that. But I, I can. That's not a big deal. Okay. So then if I go back over here, I can change this energy to zero. Start at energy zero, and then we'll get the first ground state. And so it just keeps on changing the energy level until I get back down to a. Uh, a final psi at psi at x equals a of zero, and then that gives me my energy. And that's the shooting method, because it keeps on shooting until it hits it, and then we call that the energy. So over here, let me make this a little bit bigger. 
so I have my initial conditions, size zero, x is zero. Actually, I don't even need that. Um, I, here's the part that is important, searching equals true. So I'm gonna keep on looking for this uh, until I find it, and then searching will be false and it'll stop. Uh, data, this is a list of all my uh, wave function values at the different x values, okay? And I need that to plot it. So I'm gonna save all those values and plot it. Uh, actually, I don't even need to save that right there, but up here, I'm going to do this whole loop. It's a nested loop uh, until I find it. Rate 1000, this just says, don't do more than 1000 calculations per second, and it still kind of runs pretty slow. So then I start back at x equals zero, start at psi equals zero, I start at d, the derivative of psi is one, and then I add it to this data. And then I'm gonna do it until x gets to l, and during that time, here's, here's that differential equation. Calculate the uh, psi double dot, even though I'm gonna change this to E minus V. I don't know why they use V, shouldn't it be U? Let's put up here D equals zero. Okay, so give me the same thing. Uh, calculate psi dot, calculate psi, update X, and then add that data point, those two values to my data. And that's what I'm gonna plot. Uh, then I check if the final value is less than some something. I just picked a number, 0 0.002. You could pick whatever you want. And then I plot the data. This plots that line. I increase the value of energy, and then I got to do it all again. Okay, so I changed that to a, I added that V in there. So let's see if that actually works. So it still works. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my, my bump in there in red. So we need to pick some things. Let's pick... Uh, Let's pick the bump. Let's pick uh, perturb. That's the potential. That's what I'm going to add in there. So I'm going to say uh, V0 equals, I, I see my energy levels of 0.37. So let's just try something like 0 0.0.1. Uh, we can change that. And then I'm going to call X v, XV1 is the start of that potential. And let's say that's L over 3. XV2 is where it ends. And that's 2 times L, L over 3. Okay, so that's the parameters for my potential, and I can change that. Down here, oh, let's plot it. F2 equals G curve. Uh, color equals color dot red. And then I will say uh, X equals 0, DX equals 0 0.0. .0 one, it doesn't really matter what, how big it is. And then while X is less than L, do the following, calculate the potential. Let's do this. Let's do, um, I'm gonna get rid of this right here. And I'm gonna do this, def V X. I'm gonna define the potential as a function. So I will say uh, V temp, equals zero. If X is greater than, uh, I'll just call it uh, L over three, let's say X V one, and X is less than X V two, then V T equals V zero. And then return VT. I think that worked. So while X, so let's say uh, F2.plot X V of X. I think that's what work. X equals X plus DX. Now down here, I don't want to uh, deal with all the stuff right now. So I'm just going to comment this out. So you comment is this. Is that it? No. Yeah, it is. And then all that's commented out. I can put the end of the comment right there. Okay. So let's. I just want to. I just want to plot the potential. Let's see if it plots the potential. And it didn't. Good thing I checked. Can't find G curve. That's weird. Can't find G curve. G curve. Okay. So there's my potential. That looks pretty good. You can see it's not completely steep there because that's going from one x value to the next. But overall, I'm pretty happy. Okay, so down here, let's let's now go back to 
this and see what we need to change. I'm going to get rid of those even though I don't actually have to. Uh, I think the only thing I need to do is in this equation, the potential is going to be, uh, I'm going to say V of X, right? Because it could be zero or it could be some other value. But other than that, that's it. That's all I need to change. I know that's amazing. So let's run it. Let's see what happens. It, it might, it might not work. Looks like it's working. So I have a higher energy level. Um, that's kind of cool. Now let's just try, let's just try something. I didn't normalize this. This is not normalized. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to normalize it. I'll normalize it. I'll normalize it. Um, so let's change this energy to something really large, right? So let's change it to uh, something greater than this energy. I'm going to say uh, V0 is 0 0.5. So you're actually getting tunneling here, but it works. And that's not the same potential. I mean, come on, that's pretty awesome. Um, let's, let's go ahead and find the second energy level. So if I go up here, so the inner, this gives me an energy level of 0.663. So if I go down here and say, start with an energy of 0.7 and run it, you'll find the second energy level. And I'm plotting the wave function here. See, can you see that? It's my face in the way. Nice. Okay, let's try something non-symmetrical. I want to move this off to the side a little bit. So I'm just going to do this. Um, where did I have it? So x1 is v over, let's just say this is going to be uh, 0.4 times l. And this is going to be uh, point eight times L. So it's, it's shifted over there. I don't know what I'm doing. And let's go back to the zero energy level. <laughs> Something didn't work. My potential didn't plot. Oh, I didn't do any of this. Okay, there we go. It's kind of fun to watch, don't you think? So we can put all sorts of functions in there um, and we get the wave function. I'm gonna go ahead and normalize this now, okay? Because I should only have to normalize it once for one potential. If you change the potential, I think you have to normalize it. So let's see if I, if I normalize this. Uh, so I already have the data. The data is the x and y values of this curve, right? So I can go through it. What I want to do is to uh, take the x, y values, square the y, uh, and then multiply by dx. And, and I'm going to use this dx value up here because that's the same. Uh, and then add up all the areas. So let's go down here and say, uh, let's put a little comment, normalization. So let's say area equals zero. Now I can say, uh, let's try this. For P in data. That won't really work actually. Because I, I want one, one, one less. So let's say for I in range len data. I think that might work. Okay, so I is going to go from zero to the second to last number in there, and I can reference each element in there. So I'm going to calculate the area as uh, DA equals uh, data I, and then, but I only want the first, the second coordinate, so it's going to be one. I'm pretty sure that's it. Because so I'm looking at this small little list, it's a list of lists, uh, and so. Zero is that one, and one is that one. Uh, so then I have to multiply that by dx, and then I say area equals area plus da, and that's it, and then I need to print that area. Oh, no, that's wrong. Because remember, I am uh, 
I want to find the probability, the integrate over the, all the probabilities. So this actually needs to be squared. I need to do psi squared. So I'm going to just put this uh, in parentheses because it scares me. Star star two, and let's run that sucker. So it's going to find the wave function, and then it's going to integrate it. Okay, so that's my area right there. So let's take that area, that number, and if I go up here to my initial wave function and divide by the square root of that number, so you imagine uh, that that psi, the constant in front of the psi, uh, that's going to still be there in the psi dot, and then it's going to get there when I when I multiply it by each other. So I'm going to get that twice on the bottom, but then the total area is going to be that, so it should give me an area of one. So now if I run this, I should get area of one, and then it will be normalized. If it doesn't work, I'm going to just be sad. I think it should work. Okay, so I need to get my thumbnail picture. There, that's your thumbnail picture. Um, so that worked. There's your shooting method with some strange potential. I mean, you can't solve that uh, with Schrodinger's equation because it's not you're not going to get a sine and a cosine. Um, and and there you go. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to give you the code to this. I'm going to give you my video on how to solve Schrodinger's equation and how to set up the shooting method. So that's at least three things in there. Oh, I should give a tutorial for animated plots. I think I have that in there too. Um, so that's four things. Okay, I'll try to remember that. Okay, that's it.